Welcome to the gym. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph uh, this system of linear inequalities. And you can see one, I have a inequality that's in our standard form and another that's in our slope intercept form. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, kind of graph these separately. Um, first of all, and I'm not gonna worry about the inequalities at this point in time, I'm just going to treat these like equations. And that helps me um, get started with the graphing. However, we, go, we will go back to the inequalities um, when we're looking into as far as our shading. But we're going to do it at the end. So for right now, I just want to make sure I know how to graph our boundary lines, which are going to be our equations. Now, we will have to determine if our boundary line is shaded or dashed, but that's very simple, and we can get through that. So the first thing we want to do, if I was going to graph 2x plus 2, or 2x plus y equals 3, is I'd want to rewrite this in slope-intercept form. So to do that, I need to isolate my y. To isolate my y, I need to get my y by itself. So to do that, I'm going to subtract a 2x on both sides. That goes to 0, so I have y equals 3 minus 2x. And again, we're looking into rewriting this in the slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to rewrite these, and just make sure when you do that that you keep the signs the same. That's a positive 3, so you make sure it's plus 3. That's a negative 2x, so you make sure it's negative 2x. Now, I want to make sure I identify my slope, which is going to be negative 2, and my y-intercept, which is going to be positive 3. Now, it's important when identifying the slope that we understand the slope is a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite negative 2 is equal to negative 2 over 1. Or we could also write it as 2 over negative 1. And I'll show you why that doesn't matter, um, which way, where you put the negative sign. But you're going to want to have the negative sign in, one, in either the numerator or the denominator. Our y-intercept is actually a coordinate point, And then it's going to be the coordinate point on the y-axis. So therefore, the x-coordinate is 0. And the y-coordinate is just going to be 3. All right, so that's going to be a coordinate point, which we're going to graph when we get to it. But let's go ahead and determine the next one. Um, the next one I don't need to do anything to, but we don't have a slope. Right? We, we don't see there's any number in front. So whenever you don't see any number in front of there, we can always assume that is going to be, well, not assume, but we can reason that that is 1. So you can see our slope here is 1, and our y-intercept is 1. And again, writing our slope as a fraction, we can write this as 1 over 1. Or if you want to, to be technical, you could also write as negative 1 over negative 1, where our y-intercept is going to be the coordinate point 0, comma 1. So let's go ahead and graph one slope at a time, or one equation at a time. Let's graph this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to my y-intercept, which is at 0, 3. So 1, 2, 3. And I make a nice big point. The next thing I'm going to follow my slope. And it doesn't matter which slope you want to follow. Again, I'll show you that it works for either one. Um, let's follow the slope negative 2, 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow our slope triangle. And since that's negative 2, that's going to tell us that's the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates between any two points. So since the change in the y-coordinates is negative, is negative 2, I'm going to go down two units. So I go down two units and label it. And then I'm going to go positive 1 to the right. And that's going to take me to my next point that is on my line. I also could have gone up 2 and to the left one. And you guys could see that that point would also be on that line as well. Now, the next thing I want to do is kind of go back to my inequality and make sure that my inequality is going is determine if my inequality is going to be um, dashed or solid. And we can determine that by looking at our inequality symbol. Oops, that's a positive one. And since this is less than or equal to, not just less than, then we know that our inequality is going to be, our boundary line is going to be a part of our solution. So therefore, this is going to be a solid line. We'll get to the shading afterwards. That's going to be our last step. The next thing we want to do is we're going to graph y equals 1x plus 1. So to do that, again, we plot the y-intercept, which is at 1. And then we're simply going to follow the slope. Now, in this case, you guys can see, I can go up 1 over 1, which will take me to this point. I could also go down 1 to the left 1, which would take me to the same point. Now, the difference with this equation, this inequality, is you can see it's greater than. And since it's greater than, not greater or equal to, this boundary line is going to be dashed. All right, so the last thing we need to do is determine our test point. And what we're, the determining test point is going to help us determine our shading. And when doing that, what we want to do is choose a point that is not on either of the lines, which in this case is 0, 0, is a great point to always choose. Now, remember, this test point has the coordinates x, comma, y. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 0 in for x and 0 in for y for both inequalities and determine if it's going to make our inequality true or false. So over here, I'll just do 2 times 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 3. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. So 0 is less than or equal to 3, which is true. So for our first graph over here, 
my test point is true. So that means I am going to be shading below that line. Then we go to our next, our next inequality. Again, I'll plug in 0. Now, it's important to plug it into our inequality, not to our equation. We just use the equation because that's what we're familiar with as far as graphing. Um, but you want to make sure that when we're, the point of inequalities is determining the shading. So you want to make sure you plug it into your inequality. So 0 is greater than 1. Well, 0 is not greater than 1, so that is false. So for this boundary line, our test point is false. So therefore, instead of shading where the test point is, we're going to shade on the other side, which would be you know, above this line. So now, the only region where you can see where both of my inequalities are going to be true is going to be right here. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a linear system of linear inequalities. Thanks.